Good morning. <coughs> Good morning. Give you a moment to sit down. <laughs> Okie dokie. Let's have a short prayer. Father, as we come to you this morning, we just want to thank you for this beautiful day you've given us today. And we just want to thank you for you give us the strength to get up and come to your house and just worship you. And we thank you for the Sunday school hour. And I ask you to be with me as I try to teach this lesson in a way that I glorify and honor you. These things I ask in that name. Amen. Excuse me, I'm a little choked up this morning. The title of today's lesson is Confidence in Seasons of Uncertainty. The last thing I want to do this morning is, you know, hurt your feelings, especially being in church, okay? That's the last thing I want to do. So I'm hoping you got a grasp of what the point I'm going to make, and that is you're never going to have all the answers to your questions in this world of ever-changing uncertainty, okay? I think, in fact, the last two years, I've really emphasized that more than ever, I think, because a lot of the last couple of years have been like a roller coaster ride for most people, I think. And when you think about it, there's no such thing either as a perfect plan. You can't make you can't make a perfect plan, you know. I mean, the best laid plans can change in a moment. You know, you can change them. You can have a different thought, different ideas. Other people can influence your plans, and there's definitely circumstances can. <clears throat> you know, affect our plans, you know, but the same token, we still, as a society of people, we still want answers to our questions. We want solutions to our problems and stuff like that. I think more than ever in our, in our, in our lifetime, and as we, you know, as we look and think about how things have really changed over the last year or two, it's like every, I think like everything's turned upside down. You know, you think about the, our, Rules, laws, morals, stuff like that. They've kind of been, you know, been, you know, pushed aside. You know, like, like people's forgot, you know, how to live a right life. And, it's, and then as we become more mature, and hopefully as we become more wise, we'll be, it's, I think it's obvious to most people that the answers won't always be there for us, for our questions. So what do we do? Well, guess what? I got an answer to that question. We cannot, you know, for a, that is, if you're a Christian, you have an option. You have turn. You can turn to God in faith, okay? But that faith requires something. It requires trust. You got to trust God because you won't always see what God's doing, and it's for sure you won't always understand what He's doing, okay? So that's why trust is so critical in our faith. I think we've said over several weeks now about Abram that he was, he was a man of faith. But like us, I think Abraham, Abram, he, get, he, was, he, he gets challenged at times to put your trust in God at all times. It's, it's, and it's a challenge sometimes to do, you know, do that. But what does the Scripture say? The Scriptures tell us we can count on, we can depend on God in all places, all times, in all situations, okay? <clears throat> you, might, you might not be able to see God's invisible hand working, but I can think we can be assured that he is working, you know, in our benefit and our behalf. In the first scriptures today, we see a, I would say, a troubled Abraham, a fearful Abraham. But if you really think about that, that's no different than us today, are we? There's a lot of people out there scared. A lot of people. They're frightened. But they don't know what's going to happen from day to day anymore with all this COVID and stuff like that. But then, and they, they're scared. Today's first scripture comes from Genesis 15, 1 through 5. After these things, the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram. I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. And Abram said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me, 
sin, I go childish, and the steward of my house is Elizur, um, Damascus. And Abram said, Behold to me that thou givest no seed, and lo, one born in my house is my heir. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, This shall not be thy heir, but he shall that shall come forth out of thy own bowels shall be thine heir. And he brought forth abroad and said, Look now towards heaven and tell the stars if thou be able to number them. And he said unto them, So shall thy seed be. As we look at Abram in these, in these particular scriptures, we still see that Abraham is he's struggling. He's struggling with the future, especially the part it talks about his hair. He doesn't have a hair to his, his, what, what he owns, and that's, that was very important back then. But at the same token, what is God doing? God is making sure that Abram understands that God can still be trusted at all times, even though the future isn't clear, you know, it might not be clear to us, and it very seldom is, but we can still put our trust in God because, I mean, let me say it like as simple as I can say it. He knows what he's doing, okay? He knows what he's doing. The word of the Lord came to Abraham, the, the word of the Lord came to Abraham, and it says in a vision, is that a dream? I don't. I, I can't really tell you. More than likely, it was a dream. You know, you know. And his, Abram was probably in his sleep or whatever. But I'm not really sure. But it just says he came in a vision. But the important thing about this vision, that this was a personal message to Abram. It was for Abram. It was personal. It was only for him to hear. And even though Abram would not understand everything that God was going to tell him. As we know, Abram would play a gigantic role in God's plan of redemption. He would play a great role in that. The vision, this particular vision, was just a, I think, was to reaffirm what God had already told Abram that, that was going to happen. But also, I mean, he knew what Abram was going through, so I think his vision was also to help to put some calmness back in Abram's life, you know, kind of settle him down a little, you know, in a sense like that, settle him down, and also really prepare him for these other things that, Ab uh, that God was going to tell him that was going to happen. Before we go any further, let's, let's look at the second verse. It talks about how God describes his relationship with Aaron. Abram. This is important, extremely important, because this, the way he describes this relationship, it should, diminish, it should diminish any fears we have about our future, okay? Look, what does God say? He says, I'm, I am thy shield. That means God's our protection. He's our defender. He's our, our protector. I mean, is there any better feeling of security knowing that God's on your side? I don't think you can have a, a, a better feeling of being secure than knowing God's on our side. I honestly don't. <clears throat> and if, when we think about protection, we think about protection from our enemies or people that don't like us. And that's tr that applies to this, but it, it also think about this part too. God protects us against ourselves, too. Because we can be our worst enemies at times. And our math gets us in trouble at times. <laughs> so we can be our worst enemies. So he also protects us against ourselves. So we ought to be thankful for that. Then it talks about, I am thy exceeding great reward. And I thought about that. Can there really be a greater reward than having a relationship with God? Can't probably, I don't think it could be. I can't be. Think about all you have and all you've done and that greatest 
reward you've got in your life now is knowing you've got a relationship with Jesus Christ. But this reward also, it could also refer to the blessings that God bestowed on Abram. It could, it could refer to that. And it might do some of them. It might, some of that might do that. But, uh, and, what, and he gave, he bestowed those blessings on Abram because Abram's faithfulness. But at that same token, don't think of it as Abram won something or got something from God because he was faithful. God doesn't bless us because we do something good or he blesses us out of his grace and out of his mercy. That's where our blessings come from. Okay? Just remember that part. How many times have I said that Abram was faithful? And I, and I, I can't oversay that, but Abram couldn't shake this feeling of uncertainty in his life about having that heir to his family. He just he couldn't shake that. And uh, when God mentioned something about a reward, that gave Abram really an opportunity to discuss that, what was on his mind with God. However, as we look at these verses, Abram does something in these verses that we should never do. He got ahead of God. He got ahead of God's plan. Because what was Abram's thoughts? His servant, his slave or servant, he was going to call him or make him the heir of his family's fortune. But that wasn't God's plan, was it? That was not God's plan. In fact, in these particular verses, he assures Abram that no servant will be his heir. And to emphasize that point, what does he do? He says that his seed will come from his own bowels, the bowels of Abram, okay? And that seed would be so numerous, it would be like the stars. You could go outside and see them, but there were so many that, that you couldn't count them. He would have that many descendants. One last comment about this particular verse this year. Think about what I'm going to say. God don't always provide all the details to his plan in our Pacific life or anybody's life. Or he just doesn't provide all the details. But the thing about it is when we wait on him, waiting on him to tell us is the essence of trust. And there's that word trust again. We wait on him. He just shares our faith or our courage, everything we have, our thoughts are in his hands. Let's go to the other set, the next set of scripture. Genesis 15, 6, and it says, And he believed in the Lord, and he counted it to him for righteousness. We, we've said over and over that Abram was faithful to God. But here in this particular scriptures, it says he believed in the Lord. Is that different, or has something changed? And the answer to that is no. Okay. Here it says, believing in the Lord. The believing just emphasizes this point about faith. It's the formation of the mind, the heart, and the spirit. In other words, our total being, Abram's total being, everything he was, his faith, and he believed in God. It, it was, his faith was in God. And that's just what the believing here just emphasizes. And it also can emphasize, you know, being a reliability, who's more reliable than God, assurance, who's, you know, we're sure that God's always going to be there for us. So. Certainty, it can be an, an emphasized certainty. We know God's always, you know, that's the same thing with God. God's going to be there. What Abram was doing, I think, 
Abram was not necessarily believing in the promises as much as he was believing in the one that gave the promises. That's the point. That's the point we're trying to make here. God made the promises, of course, but Abram's faith was in God and the Lord and in the promises too, but first and foremost in, the, in the God then the promises. Why did God call Abram righteous? We know he wasn't perfect, but he still he counted him as being righteous, didn't he? It was all about his believing. It was all about his believing, okay? What Abram had done, he had trusted his life to God. And what did he do with his future? He placed his future in God's hands, didn't he? In God's promises. <clears throat> when it came to Abram's righteousness, it was, like I said, it was all about his faith. Okay, it was all about his faith. When you think of righteousness, righteousness will always be defined according to the standard of a holy standard of God. That's how we define righteousness. The last scripture is chapter 15, 13 through 16, and it says, And he said unto Abram, Know of thy a surety that thy seed shall be a stranger in a land that is not theirs, and shall serve them, and they shall afflict them four hundred years, and also that nation whom they shall serve will I judge, and afterward shall they come out with great substance, and thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace, that shall be buried in a good old age. But in the fourth generation they shall come hither again. For an equity of the Moramites is not yet full. These last verses is really near near the end of the vision that we've talk, been talking about. What we see in these particular verses is things that would happen and would occur during the lives of Abram's descendants. Abram would be it would not be around to see all this happen, of course. But, but the point I think it taught, we need to understand about these, this, about it happening over a period of time, that the, the completion of these promises, no matter how long they took, okay, no matter how long they took, emphasizes this point that's very important to us even today. We have to wait and we have to trust on God to work in his own time, okay? All we've been talking about happened over years and hundreds of years and hundreds of years. In fact, it says, it mentions that, that, <coughs> that many years of servitude, you know, would plague Abram's descendants. Many years of servitude. They would be servants. They would be slaves until they came out of Egypt and came back to the, the promised land, Canaan. Hundreds of years would pass before all those, all God's promises were fulfilled. If they had thought it was going to be over a couple of years, how much different would they have been? How much more would they have sinned? You know, think about it in that way. Okay, like I said, all of that, and it just that part about the Amor Amoramites, it just or it ref is a reference to these pagan people that owned, that lived in the promised land before the Abraham's descendants would take, take it over. And like I said earlier, that Abraham would be dead when all these things came to a completion, but I think when he, on his death, he had the assurance that the, this promised land, all the promises God had given him would, would be filled would be fulfilled. In fact, it's not in these particular scriptures, but God gave Abram a sign before he died. And I remember, yeah, I remember reading scripture about the, the burning uh, lamp and the smoking furnace. That was signs that uh, God gave Abram that 
all his promises would be fulfilled. And it just showed, it just emphasized that the covenant God had made was real. And as we know it, that, that concludes today's lesson. It's a little bit shorter than normal, but I hope, you know, maybe when it was something that maybe was new to you. For instance, let's go to God in prayer. Father, as we come to you this day, we just want to thank you that you give us an opportunity this day to come to your house. We just thank you for you give us the help to just to get up today and just move around. And, just, and we thank you. Back, we look back on this week. We thank you for the blessings of this week. And we just thank you for watching over, providing for us, and protect us. You know, be with Jamie today as he brings a message today, Lord. And it's a message that will touch our hearts. And I pray that your spirit will move through this congregation today and just guide us and direct us in the way you want us to live our lives. And we just. So thankful for your love that only because you love us, we have an opportunity to love you, and that wouldn't happen if you hadn't loved us. And we, should, and we give you praise for all that. Forgive us many sins and shortcomings, and we thank you for all the things you do for us every day of our life. And these things we ask in our holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen.